Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, Oh, we 
we begin to sing. Singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praise the Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Well, oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day we're going to go home, and it, yes, we are. it won't Hallelujah. be just something that we're hoping for. It won't be something that we're praying for, but it'll be a reality. One day we won't be just sitting here singing about it, Brother Kenneth, but we'll be home. And I'm looking forward to that homecoming day. <clears throat> we're going to sing I'll Fly Away, uh, page 333. How does it know it? One day we are, we're going to fly away and meet our eternal destination with the Lord. <clears throat> well, some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Well, I'll fly away. ready to fly away where there'll be an uncloudy day no more troubles no more problems no more sorrow just be with Jesus all the time we can't imagine what it's going to be like when we just be with Jesus forever and ever we'll have to have a glorified body because this old body won't stand it we're just going to be with Jesus all the time. I want to just encourage us a little bit tonight. I want to talk about Paul. Saul, his name was changed to Paul. He went through a lot while he was here on earth. Uh, he, he got beat. He got stoned. He was left for dead. He was put in prison. He stood before governors and kings and all these dignitaries and some of them would, one of them told him, said, well, Paul, much learning's made you mad. You just hadn't got no sense. You're just crazy, Paul. You, you know, have you heard people say, you're a fanatic? I, I want to be. I want to be a fanatic for the Lord. I want people to notice that I, all I talk about is Jesus. That's the way Paul was. Uh, when somebody just give him a little opportunity, he would just tell them how he got saved. 
That's what, you know, I used to be like that with the church in there. Somebody could just open the door a little bit and I'd jump right in there and start talking about the church of the air. But we need to talk about the Lord and tell about his goodness. He stood before the king one time and t gave his testimony. I believe I'm a little bit too loud, Brother Kenneth. Or, uh, he gave his testimony in front of King Agrippa and King Agrippa said, almost. Almost you persuade me to be a Christian. Almost won't do. You never read in the Bible where he came back again. And, and uh, I believe it was Festus. So I don't remember if it was Festus or Felix that said, come back another time. Come back another time. And I, I may talk to you about the Lord. But these men may not have never got another chance to talk to Paul about the Lord. So, so right now, if the Lord's talking to you, it's the time to talk to him. It's the time to listen and to be saved. Uh, but Paul went before all these people, these judges and these people tried to kill him and everything. And they had to get him out of the city real quick. But Paul knew he was going to Rome. Uh, because the Lord had already told him, Don't worry about it, Paul. You testified for me in Jerusalem. Now you're going to testify in Rome. If the Lord tells you something's going to happen, you don't have to worry about what the world's going to say or what they're going to think. Uh, but Paul went on. They put him on this ship. And, and he told these people, don't go. Don't go now. The weather's not good. You know, we can tell people, don't go there. Don't do that. And they won't listen. I can just imagine hearing them say, what does a preacher know about running a ship? What does a, a preacher know about the, the waters? And saying, you know, there were 276 people on this ship. It wasn't a little boat. This was a big boat that had 270-something people on it. And Paul was saying, don't go because it's going to cause trouble. It'll put your life in jeopardy. You'll lose the ship and all. But they would not listen. How many times do we tell people, don't do that, don't go there? And they don't listen and they get into trouble. I'm here to tell you to not stay out away from the worldly places. So, Stay out of way from where the devil is. Get to where God and his people is. So, but when uh, they, uh, Paul was on the ship, and they got out a little, you know, the Bible said for a little while the wind blew softly. They thought, well, we got it made now. That preacher didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, but it wasn't long till a storm hit. Uh, and then they began to worry then. They began to wonder what was going to happen. You know, people may live in sin for a while, and they think, well, it's okay, we're having a good time, but payday's coming. You know, the devil don't tell people. When he tells them to do these things, he won't tell them the end result. So he don't tell them if they get out and do drugs that it's going to mess up their mind, it's going to mess up their brain. So he don't tell them when they doing this alcohol uh, what it's going to do to their body or when they're smoking that it's going to ruin their lungs uh, you know he just says it's fun it's fun just go ahead and do it everybody's doing it anyway we can do it too he's a liar everybody ain't doing it I'm one of them that ain't doing it uh, and the devil will tell you, you can get away with it other people get away with it we may get away with it for a while but we ain't going to get by with it Someday we're going to stand before the Lord and we're going to give account of what we've done. But they got in this storm. And you know, they named hur hurricanes here down on, our, on the Gulf, but that wasn't the first time that the hurricane... This storm was named Eurocladon, and it was a bad storm. And that for many days, they couldn't see the sun, they didn't see the moon. Hey, there's nothing scares me any more than water at night. <laughs> And when there's a storm, it sure would scare me. But Paul, uh, they fasted, they prayed, they couldn't get nothing done. And then Paul told them, said, don't worry. Let me see if I can find that where he said. For there, this is over in Acts 27. Paul said, be of good cheer. 
Can you imagine this preacher coming up and saying, whenever your world's falling apart, you're in a storm and you've lost everything, you don't know which way to go, and this preacher will come up and say, just be happy. Just be of good cheer. Don't worry about it. I imagine they're about ready to throw old Paul overboard. But he said, don't worry about it. And they begin to throw the things off of the ship. They begin to get rid of things that was on there. And you know what? Sometimes, well, not sometimes. Let me change that word. All the time, when we become a Christian, we got to get rid of some things. We got to get rid of some of these worldly things. Uh, we got to turn our back on them. Some of these things that's holding us down, we need to get rid of them. We need to get closer to God. And you don't have to have me to tell you what to get rid of or what to wear. If you want to live for the Lord, He will tell you. If you listen to Him, He'll tell you what to wear and where to go. Uh, and you won't have to have somebody up to. Hey, I can't get rid of, uh, I can't get away with nothing. Just the least little old thing I can say to somebody, and they won't even think nothing about it. I got to go apologize to them because the Holy Ghost convicts me. I said, I want you to. Go ahead, Holy Ghost, and convict me of it. Tell me about it. I want to face it down here and not face it up there. I want to get rid of everything that's not like Jesus. So, but they begin to throw everything overboard that they could get rid of. Uh, and then here comes this little preacher and said, Don't worry. Be of good cheer. Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. He had done told them that. And he said, you should have listened to me. I told you. I told you don't do it. But then he said, this is Acts 27 and 23, for there stood by me. There stood by me. You know you can be in trouble, you can have problems, you can have everything going wrong, but if the Lord stands by you and the angel of the Lord stands beside you, what else do we need? And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there stood by me this night the angel of God. The angel of God. Whose I am and whom I serve. God and Paul was telling them, the angel of the Lord stood by me, my God, my God, the one that I serve, the one that's going to take care of us. I belong to him. Hey, if you belong to the Lord tonight, you can go through any problem, you can go any trouble, any trouble, you can go through any storm. If you've got the Lord, the, the angel of the Lord, hey, that's all we need. Uh, just for the Lord to say it's going to be all right. This, You know, Paul needed encouragement too. And when this angel, you know, when he, Paul, I, I know Paul was human and he was probably concerned too. But when the angel of the Lord came to him and told him it's going to be all right, <laughs> It's going to be all right. If you got troubles, if you got problems, talk to the Lord. Just talk to him and listen to what he tells you and read the book. Read the book. It'll tell you it's going to be all right. Jesus said, I'm not never going to leave you. I'm not never going to forsake you. And he didn't say if you don't have any troubles, uh, if you don't have any problems, I'll go with you. He just said, I'm going with you. That's all we need, just the, for the Lord to say, I'm with you. I'm still taking care of Lots of times in the night when I wake up and I just can't sleep, I just know that the Lord's right there with me. When I get up of the morning, the first thing I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for staying with me when I couldn't sleep. Uh, thank you for being with me when I'm troubled at night and I don't know what to do. Just thank you, Lord. Lord. Just thank you, Lord. Uh, hey, we're so far behind on praising the Lord and thanking Him for what He done. We praise singers. We praise preachers. We praise doctors. It's about time we praise the Lord. 
It's about time we stopped and said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but Paul told him, the angel of the Lord stood by. Stood by him. Wouldn't you? When you're in trouble, don't you just want to, the angel to just say, it's going to be all right. I remember one time, and some of you have heard me told, tell it, when my husband was so sick, uh, and we were, I would stay home from church, and I don't stay home from church. And one Sunday morning, I remember, I was just walking up the little steps to go up to the bedroom, and I said, Lord, we sure do need you. We sure do need you with us today. And he said, I said, we need your help. He said, you got it. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. That's all I needed just to hear that the Lord say, you've got my help. If we've got the Lord's help, we don't need anybody else. And I know I'm not going to get through with this. But Paul began to talk to him, and he said, they had been fasting and praying, but nothing wouldn't happen. Sinner people can fast and pray if they want to, but nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen till the saints of God begin to fast and pray. But Paul told them, he said, you need to go ahead and eat. It's been several days so since you've eaten, so just go ahead and eat. And then Paul took the bread and blessed it. Though he prayed right in front of all these people. Most of them that was on this ship was the prisoners that was going to Rome to be put in jail, to be executed anyway. And he was telling them, you need to eat. And then when he took the bread and prayed, prayed right in front of them, hey, it's time the world heard Christian people pray. It's time we pray wherever we are. When somebody comes up to you, pray. Don't wait till you get home. Pray right then. Hey, the devil don't care if we're doing his stuff. Uh, we need to pray. We need to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, you know, when Paul and Silas was in jail, it said they began to sing uh, and pray at midnight, uh, and the prisoners heard them. It wasn't just the prisoners that heard them. God heard them too and opened the doors and they got out of jail. So we need to let the world know somebody still talks to the Lord. And, but when he began to give thanks, uh, and then uh, they just turned everything loose uh, and committed themselves to the sea, don't we need to just turn everything loose and to commit ourselves to the Lord and say, Lord, it's in your hands. You take care of it. Quit trying to fight it. Just throw it over on the Lord. Like Peter said, cast all your cares over on him because he cares for you. But they just committed to the sea. Then they set out some kind of test that they did, and they thought they were getting close to land. We're getting close to land. We can tell by the way things go, and we're getting close to heaven. We're getting close to the land. And they began to, some of them wanted to leave the ship. And Paul said, Except you stay with the ship, no, no life will be saved. <laughs> so we got to stay with the ship. We got to stay with the Lord. We got to stay on this good old gospel ship <laughs> and just keep hanging on. Let me tell you, don't give up. <laughs> it may look bad. It may look rough. But read the back of the book. <laughs> Read the back of the book. And Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to stay with you through every storm, through every problem. I'm going to walk with you when you go up the mountain. I'll be with you when you go through the valley. Just hold on to the moel. Just hold on to the Lord. But to make it short, I know I'm going to run out of time. Paul said... That they wanted to kill them all because they were afraid they were going to escape. And Paul had found favor with the captain of the ship, and he didn't want to kill them because he didn't want Paul to die. So he said, no, just hold on. And then when they got close to land, they kept measuring and measuring the water to see how close they were. And they could tell we were getting closer. We are getting closer. And then they, the ship went aground, and it got busted up, and the hurricane tore it all up. Uh, and then Paul said, 
Some of you just jump in and swim. Just make it to land. We know we're close to land. Just jump in and swim. Let me tell you tonight, uh, you may feel like you're out in the water and then it's up to right here and you're just about to drown. Uh, but keep swimming. Keep swimming. Don't give up. Uh, and Paul said, uh, the uh, captain said, some of them got on the board. Some of them got on part of the ship that had tore up. Uh, whatever you've got to hold on to, hold on to it. Uh, hold on to it. Uh, hold on to that last thread of hope that you might have. Uh, just hold on. Sometimes when I get in trouble and I have problems and things, I don't know what to do with I just get the old book and hold it. I just hold it up close to me. And I no more lo tola no more lo tola no no more lo I can feel the peace of the Lord that comes from this word. Hey, if you hold on to the word, you'll make it. Whatever it takes, whatever you have to go through with. Some of them held on to part of the ship that was broke. Some of them held on to board. Some of them swam the shore. Let me tell you, whatever you got to do, don't turn loose. Don't give up. We do near home now. We do near heaven now to quit. Don't let the devil talk you into quitting. Don't let him talk you into gaming. The Lord hadn't give up on us. We can't give up on him. Hey, Jesus didn't come down here and die to let the devil overcome us. We may go through sickness, we may go through problems, uh, but we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Let me encourage you. Uh, if you're a child of God, uh, Jesus is going to see that you make it. You know, he told her, uh, he prayed a prayer one time, and he prayed, Father God, uh, keep these that you've given me out of the world. Don't kill them. Just keep them safe from the world. Uh, and on over a little bit farther, I think it was over in John 17, he said, I pray not only for these, not only for these disciples that you've given me, but I pray for them that's going to be one through their word. We were one through their word. Jesus is praying for us. Uh, don't it just make you feel good when you've got problems and troubles and somebody says, I'm praying for you. Let me tell you tonight, Jesus prayed for you. He's still up there praying for it. He's still our go-between to Father God. Uh, and he'll say, Father, that's one of mine. Would you just help him? And he does. Uh, the Lord does help us. Father God will help us. He loves you tonight. Let me tell you, stay with the ship. Don't jump out. Don't jump back out in that world. There's more troubles out there than they are on the ship. Hang on to the Lord, and he'll hang on to you. Just die the moment. Just hold on to the Lord. Whatever it takes, we're going to make it. We may be sick, we may have problems, we may have financial needs, but God's the answer to every one of them. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, hold on. If you hold on just a little bit, he'll hold on to you a big bit. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We may be off of the air, but I think it would be all right if we just stood up and praised the Lord. I